My name is Barbara Walker. I'm the wife of the late Roy Walker. Roy's upcoming interview was taken in 2005. Then we got a desert like this. And today we have 2021. Nothing has really changed since then with the Liberty Lit fires. It's even worse. People travel from all around the world to visit our region without realizing the devastation on the environment and all the wildlife which has been disappearing before our eyes. I encourage long-time locals to speak out and be a voice for our environment and for all our little creatures, great and small. Fire, fire, fire. The red steer. I have been managing Roy's Retreat, an animal sanctuary uh, located on the road uh, to Lake Argyle for about 25 years. So our main project were always caring for the land and wildlife. Instead uh, of using the tool of fire, we were using our horses as a tool for uh, land management, um, which with a short period of time, rotating uh, the horses around from one paddock into the other, but then it's following with a resting time for the, for, for the land. So by doing that, uh, we, we are simulating the wild herd effect. Roy's words were spoken by a bushman who was living his whole life on, on the land. So what he meant in his interview, there's not enough stock on, on, on the land. Well, it's the way you, you look at it. Yes and no. Uh, wild cattle, for example, have the real herd effect and are together in a group and move on. Only stay for a short period of time in one area. So like Roy said, better to eat the grass than to burn it all the time. So for example, domestic cattle who are not managed and just mingle around and are scattered all over the place, well, they can be very destructive. I want to show you something. It's just a little patch, but this is how nature works. So we have here, it's still a little bit moist. We have here um, horse manure, you know, and have a look what's happened. I mean, we are going towards the end of the dry season. It hasn't rained for many, many months, you know. You see what is growing here? Look, still green. Look how it's growing. So, so stock actually, can do a good job. What I want to say is, if you live on the land, like I do, you observe nature, you go out. Nature is talking to you, you know? Nature uh, tells you where you're wrong or where, where you're right. My husband Roy Walker was born in Bunbury in West Australia. In his teens he ran away to the north. During his life he has worked on many stations as a stockman, horse breaker, yard builder and saddler. He was once head stockman on Argyle Downs for the great pioneer family the Durax.
Roy had set up his own paradise close to Lake Orgal, which had drowned much of the country he knew, using local hand-cut timber and stone from the surrounding countryside he built a pioneer dwelling on Spillway Creek, reconstructing it from his memories of a grey pioneering past. Roy was a poet and a great character from a bygone era of the true Stockman days. Many of his poems are about the Aborigines, who he called his mates. He said, I have a lot of time for the natives. They were some of the smartest Stockmen I have ever seen. Good, smart, and they knew their game. The 20th November 2006 marked Roy's passing. His last wish had been to be buried at Roy's retreat, his favorite place. Leanne, Jacqueline and myself fulfilled his dying wish and pushed and pulled Roy's dead body in a wool bar through the bush from our dwelling to his final resting place. Just as Roy felt to live conventionally while he was alive, so even in his death, he also refused to conform. Lord, give me the words to express the beauty that you have created. To see and use your creations to the full. All these beautiful gifts of nature that surround us. How many of us actually see and use your untold works of love? And love. We, us humans, should never want. You know, people, many, many times this came over the radio, broadcasted by the government, for people to look after the land, help nature along. Well, I've done that all my life. I've been in the bush all my life. It took me 20 years on this piece of land here to get it back to what it used to be. I had stock to, to do this. The land must be worked by stock. I had horse. They got it back beautiful. After 20 years, the clumps were all joining. The spear grass, Mitchell grass, Flinders grass, they're all joining in as one. It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. But, just in a matter of a few minutes, 20 years of caretaking this land was destroyed by, more or less I call them terrorists. Terrorists, they're all over the bloody world. Destroyed. The grass was beautiful. The clumps were joining. But now, no more. It'll take me another 20 years to get this back with my horse. Without horse or stock on this land, it won't work. Just be a desert. Fire, fire, fire. The red steer. And that's why Australia is expanding. The desert is expanding right to the coast because of one thing, not overstocking, fire. Back in my time in the early 40s, we had stock. We had thousands of heads of stock. The country looked good, you can't tell me. But along come a fire. A fire. We used to fight fires in those days. Now they don't go out and fire, fight them. They, they go around with a, with a helicopter and drop a few bombs or backburn. They burn more country backburning than what they do any other way, than, the, than the, what the, the, the bushfire will do. But when I look around me now and see this, and it's not we that suffer, it, it's, the, it's the wildlife. The wildlife has got too much stacked against them. And they're going out and they will go out. They will go out. Unless they take some out of Australia, they might be saved. We have got so many things against the, the, the wildlife. Firstly, would be fire. That's the main one. That's the killer. It burns all their coverage and God knows what. Then we've got the dingo, which does not belong to this country. Does not belong to this country. Now we've got the cane toad coming in. Now we've got the cat. Now we've got the, the road. I don't know how many full neck lizards are on that road every time I go in the hard road. 20, 30 every time I go into town. 
the fox and all this all this is against aerial baiting is destroying more more wildlife than than, than 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 killing wild dogs this here is a spear grass clump here most of the clump is destroyed it got a little bit there now that'll take quite a few years to form but if it wasn't burnt these clumps would join the whole the whole land would be covered with clumps and the stock eat it and keep it down nice but this has all just come up after a fire which this is what a lot of these the people burn it to bring up the green grass but the green grass only lasts a few weeks might be a month at, at, at the most then she's dead she's open to the sun the ground will crack open and it's got no coverage all the coverage is burnt it's all burnt see all this coverage all burnt full of seed full of seed all burnt all burnt the clump are destroyed, only a little piece of the clump left. See, little pieces of the clump left. Now that'll take years and years to join all in as one. But people can't see this. This here is a baobab. It might come again, it might not. But she's heavily scorched. I say it won't come again. If you follow me, I'll show you some more. Now you see this? Bohemia, you will never come again. He's finished. He's finished. This country used to be covered one time in Bohemia. There's another one. Kulibar. Finished. Finished. Here. Limbs are snapping off everywhere. Trees will never come again. Every every time after fire, less trees, less trees, less trees. Less grass, less grass, less clumper. The clumpers are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then we've got a desert like this. 20 years of work, 20 years of work destroyed. And it looked so beautiful before. It looked so beautiful. You know, people, this piece of land, all up, would be at least Oh, I'd say a quarter of a million acres from the town to the Lake Argyle tourist village. It has a natural fire break is a spillway. Then it's got the hard road to the Lake Argyle village. And on the, on the northern side and western side, it's got the Ord River. It's got the best fire break ever. This land we're on, I've been here 20 years. We managed to save it by fighting fires back off it. That's when I was training all the naughty boys from the city. I had people to help me push the fire back and save the land, quite a bit of land. But no, they're all in town now. They took them all to town. But this year I got caught unawares. I wasn't here, but the fire was lit up on the main road on our side and come over the ranges and got into me but uh, I rang the police and they got sent to Shire Grader out and we put a we put a bit of a break around but then we were lit again right at the camp after that purposely but uh, it's one hell of a job to to help this land survive and and the wildlife in it see these plants this land destroyed Purposely, by terrorists, I say. I call them terrorists. The planet's going downhill fast. There's signs everywhere that trespassers and will be prosecuted. Firelighters will be prosecuted. Find so many thousand dollars. Not one has been found, and they know who are doing it. No one. It'll go on and on. And on. All this land will be the same. I don't care. It's a lot of propaganda about what the government puts up. They don't give a bugger about the all. The grass, the stock feed. Give it back to the Aboriginals. Now what, the only way we can help this land, we will have to backburn to save the area. 
And I, I hate to buck burn, but it's got to be. We've got to do it all ourselves, Barbara and myself. Make a cry. We will have to buck burn. And in the buck burn, you're destroying so many reptiles, so many marsupials, so many birds, ground birds, all through buck burning. Well, it's better to have some than none. And they say the country was overstocked. <laughs> There's not enough stock in it now. It's best to eat the, eat the grass than burn it. Fires, fires, fires. Nature sees to the fire. You hit with the lightning now and again. But I had this, I never had a fire here for five or six, seven, eight years. But I fought them back, that's why I fought them back. I had the people here to help me fight them back. All done with a green bush and a blanket. But now, no. And it costs money to get a grader in to make fire breaks. It costs a lot of money. And it's very, very seldom the government will help you with that. Very, very seldom. But Australia is going downhill fast. It's, it's going to be a desert, like, like out there in the, in, in, in the Great Sand in all that. All this. Australia is now reliant Not on stock or that anymore. They don't care about the land. Don't tell me they do. Otherwise they'd, they'd put more into stopping these fires. They rely on iron ore, copper, zinc, tantalite, all that, and the diamonds, gold, silver. You don't want rain for that even. You don't want rain. That's all they're thinking about. That's all they're thinking about. The country's all getting opened up because of the mining, not because of the stations and the stock. It's finished. Go, you don't. No, just going into that yard to get a bit more tucker. Hey?